Hello everybody. Tonight I'm replacing this transformer on this Intellivision for people that don't know how to do it. It's fairly simple. Don't ever try to repair one of these. It's just simpler to replace it. The hardest thing about replacing this is not damaging this ribbon cable here on the power supply itself. Pretty simple what you're going to do. There's two screws that hold the power supply itself to the board. You're going to remove those two screws. Once you've done that, you're going to remove this lead coming off of the transformer that goes onto the power supply just by wiggling it back and forth until it comes free. Next you're going to remove this cable and once again really carefully remove this ribbon cable. Once it's free you can take it out and set it to the side. This is a transformer and as you can see it's already been cut. I cut it, I was actually going to repair it, or not repair it, replace it, and then I was like, well heck, somebody might want to know how to do this, so I'm going to do a video here on how to do it. Anyway, what you do is you're going to then remove the two screws that hold this transformer in. There's also two screws that hold the power switch in. You're going to want to remove both of them. Once those are removed, you can take the whole system out. This here, when you take it out, will actually be still connected. I, Like I said, I cut them. And you're just going to pull the power wire through the back of the Intellivision. Then you're going to take the Intellivision itself, just set it to the side. Once these are cut, like I've done here, just take it, set it to the side, because this one here is no good. At the end of the video, I will show you actually how to test voltage on this power supply, or correction, transformer. This is the good transformer here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tin the wires with a soldering iron. Fairly simple to do. Make sure your soldering iron is heated up. These here I've already tinned. You're going to heat the wire up and then you're going to apply solder to the wire. Do not apply solder to the soldering iron but to the wire itself. That'll tin it. You want to tin all these five wires on here which I've already done and you're going to, want to tin all the wires on this wiring harness which I'm going to do after they're tinned you're going to cut yourself some heat shrink here, sliding it down over the connection. And then heat shrinking it. I usually use a lighter, which I'll show you here in a little bit, to heat shrink all these connections. Don't use electrical tape. Electrical tape will unravel in time. These connections will spark, causing problems. Right now I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to tin all these wires, connect them, and then I'll come back and show you how to use this heat shrink. Welcome back. I got all these connections shrunk wrapped. Um, left one open here so I can kind of show you how to do it. The connection has been soldered together. You're just going to take the piece of shrink wrap, you're going to slide it over the connection. As that. You're going to take a lighter and you're going to heat from the middle outwards working out each direction. Don't start at one end and work through it. Start at the middle and work all the way through. Don't worry about melting the solder. It ain't going to happen. Solder melts at a really high temperature right around six to seven hundred degrees and this ain't going to get that hot. Just do that as so. Working down. like that until you're complete. Once you're complete, next thing we'll do is test the voltage on the uh, connection here. <clears throat> Make sure the power switch is on. This is your power switch. Make sure it's in the on position. With the on position, you're going to have your yellow wire here your blue wire here, 
your green and yellow wire right in the middle. It looks green, but there's actually a yellow stripe on it too. So it's green and yellow. Your green wire here and a green wire here. <clears throat> to test your connection, what you're going to do is you're going to take your voltmeter here and we're going to be testing alternating current. So we need to switch it to AC 200 as that. With your connection here that we'll be testing, we're going to take one of our probes, put it on the yellow wire and one of our other probes here and put it on the blue wire. We should be getting roughly 18 volts by doing this. As you can see we're getting 18.2 volts. From there you're going to test the center wire which is yellow or green and yellow. You're going to touch that connection and this one here we should be getting roughly 8 or a correction I think it's nine, yeah, 9.25 volts and we're getting 8.9 which is intolerance. Take it off of this lead, put it over to this lead. Again, 8.9 volts. Take it off both those leads, touch both the green to get green. So this green here and this green here, you're going to test. And you should be getting 18 and a half volts, which we are. And that is it. That there, that's all there is to testing the voltage on one of these. Just remember the blue and yellow together you should be getting 18 volts. The green and yellow, the center one to any of these two green ones, one at a time, you should be getting 9.2 volts. And the two green together, you should be getting 18 and a half volts or somewhere close to that. As far as that, that is it. Besides putting it back into the system itself, this uh, power or transformer is now in good working condition and should be able to power up the system. Uh, next video I do, I'll show you how to test voltage on the power supply itself. This is the power supply. So the next video I do, I'll show you how to test for correct voltage on this. Thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, please post below.